as you can see, we are here in the kitchen. A number of different stations working and cooking at the same time. Here's Chris, our executive chef. And we are going to uh, actually see some of this stuff in action right now. And uh, we're going to get right to it. Okay, we're back with Chris at Eno Terror. We're back here in the kitchen right now. As we're getting ready for the uh, day service, it looks like, back here. That's right. Um, one of the things that we just talked about were how, we, how easy and how functional the system is back here. That's right. Uh, what are we going to do right now? Uh, well, we're going to show how easy it is uh, uh, by picking up a little pasta. Um, you know, with, with proximity and, and no wasted space, uh, you really get an idea for how efficient uh, uh, some cu you know, custom piece really can be. Uh, so, you know, plates, the uh, cooking surface, and the pasta are all within three feet of my hands, you know, my, my, my body. So it, it makes it very easy to uh, um, be very, very quick and efficient in the kitchen. Uh, and just a step behind us here, just move this out of the way. Just behind us here is a, uh, a rail of mise en place. Uh, so as a cook and as a chef, uh, you know, I sort of have my color palette, all the things that I want to work with right here in front of me. Uh, this dish happens to start with uh, some leafy greens, uh, bok choy. Now one of the other nice things about the pasta cooker is you can also do vegetables. That's right. Um, the pasta cooker, as Bob is saying, uh, is not only great for cooking pasta, but it's also very good for blanching vegetables, uh, doing anything that really requires you know, constantly boiling hot water. Um, in theory, uh, we could even put vegetable stock in there or chicken stock and cook our pasta in, in another medium other than water, uh, but uh, generally we cook everything in water. Bob, roughly how many BTUs are we talking on the burners on this unit? Uh, 32,000. About 32,000 on the BTUs on this? And well, the other things that's really nice is that we have the ability to do this is put floor troughs on the line so it's easy to clean. So really just in one station, turning around, all of our ingredients are right there, all of our utensils are hanging up above us, yeah, we're ready to go. Above, there's, there's actually a built-in... Uh, uh, beans right here where the water will come out and uh, um, uh, continue to refresh the water in the bain. Uh, we've got access to pots and pans right above us here. Uh, so, you know, we're, we're moving ahead. Real nice. It's too so, like bad. I said, everything is, is, is within reach. Uh, the pasta cooker, the stove, uh, the mise en place, and even right here, our new heat. Sorry. It's inside one of them. It's inside one of them. I'll tell you what, it's too bad we can't do smell vision here because this <laughs> smells great. <laughs> Again, we're starting the day off, I guess, right? That's right. <laughs> That's <laughs> so we have our gnocchi that we've made ahead of time and um, uh, portioned into a small bag. Again, that's what our prep area downstairs is really, you know, used for. Exactly. You know? um, we're going to add it to the bin here. And pop this right in the water. And in about uh, 25 seconds, not even, that'll be ready to go. All right, we're going to come right back to this, and we'll see what this looks like at the very end. Again, as Chris is working over here, multiple people working on the same line all at the same time. We're getting our socks, our sauces uh, started for the day. Multiple use. What was that piece there? That's a cortana. Cortana? Uh, so as you can see, in no time at all, uh, we're able to pick up uh, you know, pasta, really 
really anything, uh, but you know, very efficiently and um, you know, utilizing all of our uh, top quality ingredients, uh, keeping them fresh and ready for service. Important part of what we do. Absolutely. Well. Chris, I appreciate it, uh, you know, looking and seeing how fast and efficiently we were able to make that. Uh, I'll tell you what, it, it, it's truly amazing to see what the uh, the chefs of America get to do on a day-to-day -day basis. You know, and with equipment like this, uh, the sky's the limit, so thank you very much. Okay, we're back here with Chris at Eno Terra. Uh, Chris, uh, where are we right now? Uh, we are in the old basement of the original construction. Uh, it's about uh, 56 degrees here. And um, uh, the thickness of the walls definitely helps us to keep that temperature uh, temperate down here. Now, this wall back over here, that's the old foundation to the... Uh, that's right. It's about three feet thick, that wall. And how old, how old is this uh, establishment? Uh, it's about 150 years, uh, right. although uh, we opened uh, in Oterra in 2008. Right. All right. And uh, I can see, you know, just looking right around here, we have a, a nice wine storage with a racking going on here. Absolutely. Um, committed to uh, buying local, but to drinking global. Right. Now this is uh, just down here. Let's take a look up over here, sure. and we can actually see how many bottles we have here. Yeah, you just kind of take a take a peek up, and yeah. and you can All see right we go quite up up over here. Now this is what our red storage here. Yeah, this is just red. This is all just nothing but red wines. That's right. And you said we have about what seven thousand. That's right. Uh, on our stuff, um, quite an extensive wine selection down here. Uh, yeah. Again. Know, Tell us about our area down here. We're in uh, Princeton, New Jersey, right? Right. We're actually in Kingston, which Kingston. is ju just north of Princeton. Um, you know, we have a very uh, educated uh, clientele here, and um, you know, not only are they educated in terms of worldly wines, uh, but they're also educated in terms of knowing what's local and and being interested in finding what's uh, uh, grown locally and prepared locally. And to have a kitchen like we do here, where uh, you know it's very versatile in terms of type of equipment and plenty of space. Uh, we're able to uh, work with so many uh, local farmers and bring in all kinds of local produce. Fantastic. All right, uh, we're going to take a quick look upstairs, too, and see Absolutely. what we have. I know we have some private dining room areas That's upstairs. Right. Um, and I think we got one thing we want to take a look at up there, but Absolutely. let's make our way upstairs. And we'll okay, see we're back here with Chris from Mino Terra. Chris, uh, we made our way upstairs now. Yep. Um, I can see we have some private dining areas. What can you tell me about this room over here? Well, uh, there's a couple of rooms. Uh, first off, uh, the larger room upstairs, uh, as you uh, stated, is our private dining space. Uh, we can accommodate up to about 65 guests in this space. Uh, but we also have a more, uh, a more intimate uh, room here. Uh, it's our private dining room, and this is a room where uh, when guests are interested in this space, they're going to have a conversation with myself and our wine director and talk about menu and talk about things that they really, really like and, and you know, want to do during the dinner. And this is our white wine storage up over here? Yeah, yeah, right next to the, uh, the room. One of the walls is uh, from our white wine storage. Uh, this, is, again, is refrigerated. And, and, you know, when you think about inspiration for dining and, and conversation, uh, seeing lots of uh, wine right off to your side is always inspirational. Absolutely. And you can see a nice little intimate space here, and uh, you know, perfect for uh, thanks. All right, Chris, I appreciate it. Uh, we're going to work our way back downstairs. We're going to take a look at uh, the little prosciutto bar. It looks like that we have set up down yeah, there. Yeah, what yeah. can you What can you tell me about that? Well, that is uh, one of the focal points of the restaurant. Uh, not only is it where we serve and um, uh, slice all of our salumi and fromage. Uh, but it's also where we do our handmade pastas. It's where we display our bread from Witherspoon Bread Company. Um, we have quite a few uh, things that are on display at that station. So let's go check it out. Okay. Okay, we're back here with Chris from Mina Terra. To, uh, Chris, we made our way to the mid-level of the restaurant. Uh, what can you tell me? What are we looking at right now? So this is one of the uh, busiest uh, focal points of the restaurant. Uh, there's lots of activity going on around here. Uh, this is where we will display all of our house-made, well, all of our uh, um, company-made bread. We own uh, a bakery. Uh, it's where we display things to uh, really, you know, connect with uh, the seasons. For example, right now, we have some spring garlic uh, right on display. Uh, this is exactly what's happening locally, and uh, we're using it in the soup right now. But again, this area uh, is really uh, a focal point that focuses on salumi and fromage, focuses on bread, but uh, most importantly, it focuses on pasta. This is a, uh, a pasta machine. Uh, it's a hand-rolling pasta machine, uh, electric, of course, uh, as we do a great deal of pasta production. But this allows us to roll pasta sheets. It allows us to cut various uh, shapes and sizes. Uh, very, very versatile, indispensable machine. Hey, and I see a real another indispensable machine right to your <laughs> left over you there. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, let's take a look at this thing. Yeah, I mean, this is a. Uh, I mean, we talk about Cadillacs or Rolls Royces of machines here. This is it. Exactly. This is a uh, hand crank uh, prosciutto slicer. Right. Um, 
Yeah, what's terrific about this is that in its hand cranking, uh, it doesn't generate a lot of uh, residual heat. Uh, so it slices the prosciutto paper thin uh, and does a super, super job at it. Can you show us basically what happens? You basically sure, yeah. that's a hand crank on that? Okay, we're back with Chris from Inoterra, and we're going to see this uh, machine in operation right now. Yeah, this is uh, a hand crank uh, prosciutto slicer, uh, and by uh, turning this wheel here, it moves this carriage back and forth. And conveniently enough, every uh, time I rotate, it clicks it forward, so it gives me a nice paper-thin slice, and you can see them come right off of here. And we're not really going to be able to get any type of a slice like that with any other type of product. Uh, I mean, it's, it's, uh, I'm going to almost see Bob through it. It's, uh, <laughs> it's that nice. Uh, and, and like any good prosciutto, uh, you know, we're keeping the, uh, the, the white part, the fat on here. And that's really uh, um, the trick is to have this, uh, to be able to slice the prosciutto that thin and not melt this fat is very tricky. And the, uh, the hand crank slicer uh, does exactly that. It's pretty much the only way to get that thing done. Well, oh, another fantastic piece for me and A Supply, another great product from uh, you know, Terra. And uh, Chris, I can't thank you enough for the time that you spent with us today. Um, another great design. We're going to be going to another place uh, that the restaurant uh, owners have uh, built. We're going to go check that one out. But I can't thank you enough for your time and uh, all the kind words that you said for us today. It's my pleasure. And thank you guys for your attention to detail and uh, continuing service. Thank, thank you. you.